This is a lesson on Caesar, De Bello Gallico, Liber Quartus, that is Book 4, Chapter 20. We'll just go through the Latin and go through the notes and glosses that I've written for this chapter. We start off with Exigua parte aestatis reliqua Caesar. Uh, we have an ablative absolute here, Exigua parte reliqua, those all agree. Pars partes feminine, part. The adjective exigua is in the emphatic position, agreeing with parte, and so is reliqua. Uh, we have an ablative absolute of the third kind here, where it's we have a noun and then we have an adjective with an implied participle being linking them. So we have parte reliqua, so with part remaining. Uh, ad exigua parte with a small, scant, meager part or portion parte, aestatis, of the summer, that's a genitive, reliqua, remaining, being left over. So with a small part of the summer, a meager part of the summer left. Caesar, there's your boy. Etsi in his locis. Etsi is like although. Although, even though, in his locis, in these places, in these environs, in these lands, you could say, quod omnis Gallia ad septentrione swergit, uh, quod plus the indicative wergit, we have because, it's an indicative causal clause, because all of Gaul, the totality of Gaul, uh, wergit, it lies or it stretches forth ad septentriones towards the seven, towards the seven stars in the north that make up uh, the Big Dipper. So he says that all of Gaul stretches towards the north or all Gaul faces the north. We probably say that Gaul lies in the north as opposed to Italy, which would, would they would say lies more in the south. All of Gaul lies mostly in the north. And even in these places, because all Gaul lies in the north, maturai sunt hiemes, early are the winters. Winters are early. Uh, winters are early around here because Gaul's in the north. And there's a small part of the summer remaining. And the summers are shorter because the winters, they're earlier, they're longer. Then we have our tamen, once again, not post-positive, Caesar. Tamen in Britanniam proficisci contendit. Nevertheless, even though in these places the winters are early, because Gaul lies in the north, even though that is true, contended, he hastens, proficisci, complementary infinitive, proficiscor, its deponent, so it looks passive, translated as active, to set out in Britannium, into Britain. So he's going to Britain. Quod omnibus ferre gallicis bellis hostibus nosris inde subministrata auxilia in telegebat. And it keeps going. Uh, this, this is another quod plus the indicative in telegebat, uh, giving his cause, his reasons for why he wished to hasten to set out into Britannia. Because omnibus ferre gallicis bellis. Uh, in ferres, like nearly, paine, almost, in almost omnibus bellis gallicis, in almost all of the Gallic wars, hostibus nosris inde subministrata auxilia in telegebat. He was understanding that auxilia, aid, help, reinforcements, because probably reinforcements because it's in the plural, subministrata had been supplied, given. Uh, inde, thence, meaning from Britain, hostibus nosris to the dative to our enemies. So he wants to go to Britain because in nearly all of the Gallic wars, all of his Gallic campaigns, he was understanding, he was given to understand that reinforcements had been supplied to our enemies, to the Romans' enemies in Gaul, uh, thence, from this place or from that place. Et and, we keep going, et and, si tempus anni, and if the time of the year, 
ad bellum garendum deficeret. Uh, deficio, deficio is like to fail or it j just didn't work out. If the time of, or the season of the year failed ad bellum garendum in order to wage war, in order to mount a campaign. So if the time of the year did not allow him to wage war, Tommen, once again, not post positive, nevertheless, even though yet still magno sibi usui fore arbitrabator, arbitrabator, uh, arbitror, once again, deponent verb, looks passive, translate as active. He was thinking, he judged, he, he had thought about and continued to hold that view. He was judging that it would be fore. Fore is a shortened alternative to futurus aum esse, so we are in an indirect statement. That it, meaning an expedition to Britain, fore would be magno sibi usui, and we have a double dative. It would be for a great use, for a great advantage, sibi for him. It would be a great advantage for him. Uh, the dative of purpose is usui with its adjective magno. It would be a great advantage. It would be for the purpose of being a great advantage, and the dative of reference sibi for him. Si modo insulam adiset. If modo has got the sense of like if only or if just, if merely, if only he had approached the island. Now you might be wondering why these are pluperfect subjunctives. Uh, they're one contrary to fact in that they're not factual. They haven't happened yet. He's thinking about a future contingency. He he had already judged. He had deemed arbitrabator that it would be in some sort of future contingency, that this expedition would be a great advantage for him if he, if only he had just approached the island. Uh, the adiset, adiset is pluperfect because it shows a prior action to this future contingency, this foray. So this expedition would be for a great advantage if he had only just approached the island. Genus hominum perspexisset, if he had only merely just laid eyes upon the, the race of people, what kind of people they were, what, what strange natives these were that live on this island of Britain. The loca, the portus, the aditus cognoviset, if he had just learned or found out the loca, the environs, the portos, the ports, the harbors, the safe places to put ships, the aditos, the approaches, the, the safe ways to go. Go ahead and check out the notes and glosses if you can. I've got a couple uh, pictures. I've got a map of uh, the English Channel and a picture of what the channel looks like on a good day. If you are in France, you can look across and you can see England and I imagine vice versa on a nice clear sunny day. So they're not too far away. The channel is about 350 miles long, 150 miles at its widest point, and just 20.7 miles at its narrowest point, and that would be the Straits of Dover. Uh, back to the Latin. Quae omnia fere gallis erant incognita. So the end of this absolutely amazing monster of a sentence. Quae omnia, all of which things, all of these things, fere gallis erant incognita. Were, un were nearly unknown to the Gauls. Nearly all of these, I'm sorry, Ferre goes with Omnia. Nearly all of these things were incognita, were unknown to the Gauls. The Gauls really didn't know about uh, the safe places to approach the island, the safe places to put your ships, what the, the environs were like, and what kind of people the Britons were. Neque enim temere praeter mercatores illo ad it quisquam, neque his ipsis quiquam praeter oram maritimam atque eas regiones quae sunt contra galliam notum est. So we have a neque neque, I see, so neither. Uh, enim is a stronger uh, nom, and it's post positive. Uh, for, it's an explanatory conjunction. For, uh, uh, neque quisquam, for nobody, no one, no quisquam, for no one, 
adit illo, for nobody approaches thither. Illo, uh, as I say in the notes and glosses, uh, is pretty much equivalent to illuk, thither, to go there. Nobody approaches or goes there temere, rashly, without a plan, without a guard. Praeter mercatores, except for merchants. Neque, and this is the other correlative conjunction, picking up with the first neque, the second neque, nor, the first one was neither, nor, hisipsis quiquam, uh, nor anything, uh, if quisquam is anyone, quiquam is uh, anything, nor anything to these his ipsis themselves, to the merchants themselves, to these people themselves, uh, was notum, notum est, quiquam notum est, was known, praeter oram maritimum, beyond the, that's the, um, the sea coast, the oram, the coast of the mouth of the maritimus aum of the sea, ma, mare maris neuter, and even, atque is a stronger et, eas regiones, and those regions, and if you have uh, an is ea id acting adjectivally, agreeing with a noun like it does here, eas regiones, not always, but often, you will have a qui qui quod relative pickup. It's almost like the qui qui quod is answering to it. So those regions. Which regions? Oh, the ones which qui sunt contra Gallium notum est, which are um, across from Gaul. So for neither does any, um, I'm sorry, for no one approaches to that place, meaning Britain, rashly, except for merchants. And nothing beyond the seacoast and those regions which are opposite Gaul are known. Uh, contra Gallium, opposite or facing Gaul. Ita que, it's just Ita and que, and so, therefore, in conclusion, vocatis ad se undique mercatoribus, and that's an ablative absolute if I've ever seen one, vocatis mercatoribus, with the merchants having been called ad se undique to him, and the, the subject I'm pretty sure is going to be Caesar, so say, to him, Caesar, undique, there is all gates from everywhere. And so with merchants called to him from everywhere, neque quant esset insulae magnitudo, neque quae aut quantae nationes incolerent, neque quem usum belli haberet aut quibus institutis uterentur, neque qui essent ad maiorem naviam multitudinam idonei portus reperire poterat. And that is another big monster of a sentence. All of these things right here, uh, starting with neque quanta asset all the way down to uh, portus, they all hinge upon reperire. These are indirect questions, and they all hinge upon the reperire. So the subject is once again Caesar. I mean, we named him at the beginning of the chapter, the very top, Caesar. Poterat. Uh, Caesar was able to reperire, to find out. To learn what? What did he learn? Not quanta esset insulae magnitudo, quanta magnitudo, of what size was the island? Don't freak out about the asset, that's just the imperfect subjunctive of sum esse. Uh, the only reason this is subjunctive is because they're indirect questions. He was unable, neque, he was unable to find out what's, what was the size of the island. You could say that he was able to find out not what was the size of the island, nor, etc. Instead of not, say neither. Neither what was the size of the island, nor, etc. And we're just going to keep doing these indirect questions. Neque, nor, quae, what, out, or, quanti, how great. Remember, quantus corresponds to tantus. If tantus is so big or so great, quantus is how big or how great. Quai, what or how great were the natives, the nationes, the, the nations, the tribes, in Colorant, that lived there, nor 
quem usum belli habrent, aut quibus institutis uterentor, nor was he able to find out what usum experience uh, of war habarent they had, or quibus institutis uterentor, or what institutions they used, they employed, they made use of. Remember that utor takes an ablative of means as, a, as its object. So if you're expecting quibus institutis to be accusative, it's only ablative because it's the object of uterentor. What institutions they used, they made use of. Nor was he able to figure out qui essent idonei portus, what suitable ports there were, essent, ad maiorem navium multitudinem, for uh, a larger maiorem uh, multitudinem number of ships, for a larger fleet of ships. Uh, the Britons do not have a rather large fleet. Caesar is anticipating on bringing one, and he wants to know if there are any safe places or harbors where he can beach a rather large fleet.